So what is a boiler and what design should I use for my still? Those are probably two of the first questions I came across being new to this hobby. Turns out when I have a look around at all the other questions that other new distillers are asking, I'm not the only one. So today I'm going to share what I've learned so far and give you six things to think about before buying or building a boiler. Hey guys, welcome to Still It. This is the channel all about chasing the craft of home distillation and making it a legitimate hobby. I make all sorts of videos all about home distillation. So if that's what you're into or you're thinking of getting into it, have a think about subscribing and ringing the bell down below so you don't miss anything. And remember, as always, make sure you double check all of your information before acting on anything. Pretty much every still has one thing in common. They all have a boiler. So it seems like boilers are a pretty good place to start when looking at different designs or builds and deciding exactly what sort of still you want. The boiler is quite literally just a pot or a vessel that you fill with the liquid you want to distill. So let's get into having a talk about those six things that you should think about before deciding which type of boiler is right for you. Number one, pot or sealed vessel. To my mind, there's two main classifications of boilers. First, there's the literal kitchen pots, and the second is a contained sealed vessel. Honestly, those are not real categorizations, but it's kind of the way that I like to think about it. So first up, you know what a pot is, right? Basically a big version of what you use in the kitchen. Straight sides, round, with a lid. Pots can be an attractive option for beginners because they're pretty easy to find at an affordable price. They do, however, have two main downsides. It can be kind of hard to find pots larger than about 25 or 35 liters, and they can be kind of annoying to seal, but more on that later. The sealed vessels don't really have a full-size lid for the whole vessel. Instead, they have ports. The most common example of these are custom fabricated boilers, things that are designed specifically to work as a boiler for a still, which for obvious reasons have a pretty big advantage over the kitchen pot. The only downside is money. If however you're happy to build yourself, keep an eye out for an old decommissioned keg. They're getting hard to find, but if you're patient you can find one and they're perfect to use as a boiler. Number two, materials. Basically for this you've got two options, copper or stainless steel. Copper is kind of traditional I guess, and let's face it, if you're into that sort of thing, it can look sexy as hell. Also, if you're gonna be building yourself, it's super easy to work with compared to stainless steel. It's easier to cut, shape, and solder than stainless. Unfortunately, it can be kind of expensive and it's not nearly as durable or easy to clean as stainless steel. If you decide to go with stainless steel, just remember you're gonna need copper at some point in the vapor path to deal with any of those extra sulfide compounds from your ferment. Also a quick note, if you are going to use a pot and not a sealed vessel, make sure you go stainless. You really don't want to be messing around with aluminum or aluminium, depending on where you're from, of course. Number three, capacity. You know the saying, right? It's not the size that matters. It's the <laughs> bullshit. Okay, but really when it comes to boilers, size does actually matter. And the range here is huge from tiny little kitchen pot stills to those huge commercial behemoths that we all drool over. At the end of the day, the perfect size for you is going to depend on exactly what you want to accomplish in this hobby. But it's also an economy of scale thing. It's kind of obvious when you think about it, but a small boiler only holds a small charge. A small charge means a small run. A small run means a small amount of finished product. And yeah, of course you could just do multiple runs. Then you end up just repeating steps that you could do once, which will really chew through the time. This really is up to you. Pick what suits you and what's gonna work best for you. But I think a good aspiration for most beginning home distillers is probably around about the 50 liter or 13 gallon mark. And hey, what do you know? A keg just happens to be 50 liters. Number four, how to open and close the thing. It's kind of important that the whole boiler is airtight other than where it connects to the column or the still of course. We don't want to lose any of those precious alcohol vapors and more importantly it can be kind of dangerous. However we still need ways to open the boiler up to fill it 
empty it and clean it. So we need a way to be able to seal it when it's running, totally airtight, and to be able to open it up to get access to it when we need to. First up is the old flour and water trick. This is often used on the literal pot stills with the big removable lid. It's pretty simple really, you just mix flour and water together into a paste and apply it around the rim of the pot. As it heats, it sets. The cool thing is you can just keep reapplying until you get a seal that you're happy with. The problem is you've got to do it every single time. And that's going to get old in no time. The other option for a pot lid is a PTFE gasket with some sort of clamp set up to hold it down. This is a viable method and it's pretty cheap I guess. The problem is it can be pretty fiddly to get a decent seal. If however you went with a purpose built boiler or a decommissioned keg, you could use a quick disconnect method. Sometimes people use threaded fittings so you just unscrew it, but more often than not the best option is going to be a tri-clamp, sometimes called a triclover. It's purpose built to quickly and easily create an airtight seal and it has the added bonus of being able to switch parts in and out, allowing you to effectively create a modular still. Pretty cool to be able to put a different still head on top of your boiler, right? Number five, heating. So obviously you're gonna need a way to heat the boiler or more specifically the liquid inside it. Depending on the size of your still, you've got a few options here. Gas, stovetop electric, or internal electric elements. Gas has the advantage of delivering a whole lot of heat and being relatively cheap to set up, especially if you live in an area that partakes in the ritual of deep frying turkeys. No, really, that's a thing. A delicious, delicious thing. The exposed flame can be kind of a safety risk if you're not really careful, so just keep that in mind. Electric elements are great as they basically make the unit plug and play. Some people do have a little bit of trouble getting a constant heat supply depending on the way that they set up their controllers and others report issues with scorching on the elements themselves. From what I can tell there's ways to negate both of those problems but what do I know? I haven't done it yet. It's also good for people who are a little bit too unorganized to make sure they've got a spare bottle of gas laying around. Uh, I wouldn't know that through experience. And lastly, stove tops have the advantage that pretty much everyone already has one. You don't need to spend money on any new equipment. They do often suffer from power cycling issues though, meaning that they can't supply constant heat, and they can only drive a pretty small still. Number six, extras. The stuff we've already talked about is what I kind of consider the essentials of a boiler, but there's a whole lot of extras that you can add to it if you want to. The list of nice to haves and for the hell of it's are kind of endless at this point. Sight glasses, thermometers, volume gauges, fill and drain ports, and a whole lot more. These aren't exactly mandatory, but I guess you can add what you want depending on what's important to you. So there you go guys, six things to consider when you're looking at boilers. But hey, I'm sure I've forgotten stuff and I'm sure I've said some weird things. I'm pretty keen to hear from the really experienced crew on this one, so hit the comments down below and let me know what you think. So if you liked the video, like it. If you disliked it, dislike it. And if you like this sort of content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below so you don't miss anything, guys. Thanks a bunch for hanging out with me. Until next time, see ya!